That seems safe. <laughs> okay. We should be going. <laughs> yeah. I haven't got right. the message pop up yet. Oh no. It says recording now in the in the corner. Yeah. That's that's us. We're recording now. Used to be a pop up, but not anymore. Okay. Let we'll me let me milk this out, more so you have more to cut out when we begin our actual. <laughs> we'll be okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back again for Club Moffat Talks. Uh, I'm Ryan. I'm Joe. I'm Lilani. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, Chris, unfortunately, will not be with us today. Um, he is um, well. For one thing, he has a an eight month year old who decides she doesn't want to sleep at all at night, which is causing a myriad of problems for him. Uh, but again, today we're going to carry forth with just the two of us here today. Um, hopefully, me and uh, Joe can. Nope, nope, we're ruining it all already. <laughs> Shut it all down. We're done. We're done. We can't do it. Oh my gosh. I, I, I think we can do this. I, yeah, I, I, think we I can, have full can, faith can in you too. Yeah. Uh, today our guest is Lalani Gibbs. Is Yes. Yay, I did it right. <laughs> Lalani, can you tell us just a little bit, just a little bit about what you normally do like for money or whatever. Oh, for and, money. <laughs> yeah, okay. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, like, yeah. like, like, like not all, not all of the stuff that you do for fun or, or the stuff that you do just because you really love it, but like the stuff that you have to do to pay bills. Right. Yeah. People are surprised to hear that I actually have like a real full-time job, like a nine to five. <laughs> um, I actually work for uh, blue cross blue shield. Okay. Yeah. So you know what that entails. Uh, oh, but yeah. That's, yeah. That's my normal, um, you know, make money job and that's why I'm able to do all the fun things that I get to do because I have a job that allows me to do it. So it's great. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, 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 the real job paying bills uh, is, is a good thing to have. Yeah, yeah for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So right. but, but, uh, we're going to stick to the template that we're supposed to use. I love a template. Uh, we're supposed to be talking about what's happening on campus, the community now. And I think that's you, Joe. I've got information about that. Okay. Uh, the 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 big one is that uh, at MSU September is Suicide Awareness Month. Okay. Um, on the fifteenth of September uh, at ten thirty, we're having a depression screening at the Clark Student Center. Uh, there'll be counselors there who can chat with students and administer a depression screener. Uh, on September twenty second, there's a Share Your Stories event, also at the Student Center. Uh, where entire campus community is invited to uh, share personal stories about how suicide has impacted them. Mm. Um, each event, uh, there's going to be some amount of uh, free t-shirts given away, and they have suicide awareness pins, or the semicolon pin uh, for people to wear. Um, for more information about that, you can call the Counseling Center. It's 940 Three nine seven four six one eight. 467 Also, the Department of Music is going to present Trio of Lost Vultures, which is a night of saxophone playing uh, on September 13th uh, in Aiken, Aiken Auditorium. Uh, we announced this because it's free. Uh, Lalani may have other things she wants to talk about besides this, but Wichita Falls Brewing Company has live trivia every Thursday at 7. Uh, and uh, the Wichita Theater's production of Beauty and the Beast is running through September. Uh, you can call their box office 940-723-9037 for ticket prices and seeking information. But that's what's going on around our community. Okay. <laughs> Part B of this is what are we interested in right now? Lalani, what are you reading or watching or doing right now for fun? Oh, um, wow. Okay. Um, I don't really have a lot of crazy downtime. I actually, um, I watch a lot of mindless TV during work because it's just like background noise for me. Sure. And <laughs> I literally just watched and finished the entire 
season and entity of keeping up with the Kardashians. <laughs> <laughs> I watched every single episode from the beginning. <laughs> And it was really entertaining because like, I already know how it's going to end, you know, but during the filming of the show, they have no idea. So right. <laughs> it was pretty entertaining. Uh, and I have a feeling if you miss something, it's okay. You know, yeah, exactly. Like it's just mindless. Yeah. Whatever in the background. But I tell you, I didn't like Kim K at first, but now she's my favorite. So, you oh. know, there's plot twists, there's drama. Uh, it's quite entertaining. Um, <laughs> other than that, like, um, I just finished the uh, League of Their Own series on Amazon. Oh. Did, were you interested in that at all? I was interested in it, but I have not watched a single episode yet. Okay. Did you enjoy it? How was it? Yeah, it's um, a very different take than the movie, obviously. Don't okay. compare it to the movie. Um, they have definitely pulled some lines from the movie, you know, to kind of give it a nod back to that. Um, there's even a special guest appearance by Rosie O'Donnell um, oh, in cool. the series later on but it's very very truthful as far as how these women were back during that time yeah. um so it really dives deep into their sexuality and how a lot of them were you know same sex and all of that mm -hmm. um and so it gets pretty deep but i mean i laughed i cried i liked it a lot i recommend <laughs> okay well, i'll have to check that out yeah um well, of course, She-Hulk is out right now on mm -hmm. uh, Disney Plus. Um, uh, the the new, I'm gonna get it wrong, aren't I? The Rings of Power, uh, Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, is also out. There's also the uh, Game of Thrones prequel out there. But the thing that I'm doing actually right now is I'm prepping for maybe next semester, maybe next year to revisit my weird fiction class. And one of the things me and the other instructor are doing is we're gonna to try to bring in more modern reinter reinterpretations of Lovecraftian mythos. So we're bringing in a, um, some of the more modern stories that have won Hugo Awards or, or uh, Nebula Awards and things of that nature. Like Elizabeth Baer, for example, is one of the big um, writers of, of weird fiction right now, who's won uh, um, a number of awards for her stuff. So. We're gonna. I, I have to get used to these new stories and figure out which of those we're gonna dive into when we revisit the class. So that's that's what I'm doing right now. And unfortunately, I've only read three pages of the book that I got uh, last week because um, I've been watching mindless videos on YouTube instead. Oh, well, sure. <laughs> that's that's what those are there for. I yeah. Think. And we complained at it about it in the beginning, you know, and now we're just addicted like everyone else. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Athena has been suffering from insomnia and she mm. just watches videos all night. Cause she's, cause she's like, these are completely mindless. There's nothing here to hold my attention. You know, this will make me go to sleep. And, and then it doesn't. <laughs> now I've heard, I don't know how truthfully truthful it is but i've heard that the blue light and the white light from your screen is part of why you stay awake yeah i've heard that uh -huh, yeah uh -huh. i i i don't know i mean like <laughs> i feel like you get that same kind of blue light thing from uh like your computer at work and sure. i can tell you for a fact that that does not keep me awake oh <laughs> um it should but uh it does not no yeah no well, I will say this in my house, all of my LED screens for like my my um, thermostat for like my um, my alarm clock, they're all blue, bluish white. So if that was true, I wouldn't sleep any night. So <laughs> <laughs> again, I don't know how true it is. I have no problem sleeping. I go out like that. So <laughs> yeah, well, I'll I'll be passed out asleep next her, and she'll just look over at me and go, ah, "Must be nice, right?" <laughs> Uh, I, I have been watching the She-Hulk series. It's only like three episodes in so far, but I've, I've been liking that. I haven't watched any of House of Dragons or Ring of Power. Um, I have a thing where I've been discovering TV series that are already over. Uh, like I just recently finished watching all of the Peaky Blinders TV series, which I really enjoyed. Um, I really like that actor, and I know I'm going to say his name wrong. Uh, Kill Killian, Killian Murphy. Um, I feel like he's really good. 
And uh, I just started watching uh, a show called Tim Star with uh, Tim Roth. He plays Ooh, a I British policeman who's been transferred to, like moved his whole family to Canada. And he's in Canada now as the chief of police of this little town. Uh, but I've, I've been enjoying that. I don't know that, I mean, it's not a, it's not a happy story, but I feel like it's well-written and well-acted. Is um, it historical at all or is it modern day? Uh, it, no, it's modern day. It's modern yeah. day. Yeah. Um, and uh, decent length seasons, you know, it's like, uh, it's like six seasons of Peaky Blinders was a total of 36 episodes. But um, the first season of 10 Star is like 10 episodes and I've watched like the first five. Uh, but it's, it's been holding my interest. I've, I've been enjoying it. Uh, I got a book, but I haven't started reading it yet. And I got it because uh, Shannon uh, Coppage was talking about that she was reading a book about a uh, zombie apocalypse. And I think it's called uh, Until the End of the World. Uh, but she made it sound interesting. So I ordered it through ILL and I took it home, but I, I hadn't started it yet. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> cool. Okay. Oh, I just want to point out the instructor I'm doing this class with. I realize he's gonna he's gonna watch this as soon as it pops up. I'm sorry, Peter. I've not read the book yet. Sorry. It, I'm not. I really wanted me to read some of it this weekend <laughs> so we could talk about it this weekend. I, I didn't uh, do my homework. I, I didn't. Uh, yeah. You let him down. I did. Well, I'm gonna get earful about it. Let me just say that I'm gonna get. <laughs> I've been reading The Office Ladies. The Office Ladies? Yeah. The Office Ladies, BFF. Okay. They, uh, you, you know, they have a podcast, Angela Kinsey and Jennifer Fisher. Oh, oh. Okay. They, they have a podcast and they talk about The Office and all the background stuff, like where they filmed and, you know, little tidbits about the show and things like that. And they're huh? watching the entire series and they're podcasting about it. And so they released a book. And it's like the New York Times bestseller, like for the last like five or six weeks now. But um, so they put all these old pictures and stuff on there yeah. um, just from their time back then. But it's really cool. Did you know that Angela Kinsey is from Archer City? I did know that. Oh, OK. She was just here recently, actually. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, she was um, she'd actually went to the school in Archer City because all she had was a Blu-ray disc to watch the episode that they were podcasting uh -huh. and they didn't have a Blu-ray player at her mom's house. So she was trying to figure out where to go. And then she went up to the school because her sister's a teacher at the Archer City School. And mm -hmm. so they took her up to the school and they found a Blu-ray player for her to watch it there at the school. Fun fact. <laughs> That's cool. yeah. She needs a mural. Someone needs to paint a mural of her in Archer City. Yeah, they should. Or a <laughs> statue. You know, right. It's like yeah. our, our, our city's most famous, uh, you know. Yeah, person. Yeah. <laughs> I will remember, remind our patrons if you need a Blu ray player, the library can provide. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's right. There, I brought it back around to us again. I Good like job. it. Nicely done. <laughs> they check out for three days and um, yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's get into the heart of it. Um, we don't have a mailbag of questions. No, um, no, we have a guest. We have a guest. Oh, a guest. So, uh, Lalani, I yes. had actually planned on you speaking about the music scene in Wichita Falls because I know you're actually active in that. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about? that aspect of your life and the and the fun things that you do oh but i wanted to hear more about blue cross blue shield <laughs> i can't really talk about that you know those are insider <laughs> secrets yeah um. <laughs> there's only so much hippo to let us get away with yeah right exactly <laughs> no um yeah i'm in the live music scene um as you say uh Originally, I was just a huge fan and a huge participator. Um, I did lots of singing, um, Joe, as you know, at, you know, on 
theater on stage. And then uh, I was obsessed with karaoke. I did karaoke a lot um, because that was a way that I could sing easily. And I always wanted to be in a band. Um, So I just kind of pushed and pushed and pushed. And um, I got the opportunity a few years ago to join an existing band that had already been in existence for a few years and they wanted a new singer. So I kind of jumped into that role. Um, did that for a few years. And then um, my life kind of changed. I'd went to an Alanis Morissette concert um, down in Dallas. And I mean, outer body experience. It was bucket list, you know, item for me. I was very excited. And uh, after the show, I was like, you know what? I'm starting an Alanis Morissette tribute band. Like this needs to happen. (laughs) So over uh, a few months time, I was able to gather the musicians that were, you know, willing and excited about it as me. And uh, we got together and we came together pretty quickly. And we played our first, we played our first three shows were like within like three weeks of each other. Like we were like show, show, show. And then um, after that, we're like, well, that's all we have is Atlantis. <laughs> we can't really play much more. You know what I mean? So we, um, we expanded our set list and now we are a nineties cover band. So okay, that's cool. Uh, yeah. So now we're doing, so we have, you have an option. We can do just all Atlantis or we can do nineties with some Atlantis, like, you know, trickled in there. But yeah, that's uh, that's what I am doing as far as live music goes. And then, of course, I still attend like every show I can. Sure. Um, do you all do go out to live music a lot around here? I did as a teenager. <laughs> um, but at some point when I lost my job and flunked out of college, I suddenly went, um, yeah, I'll just buy the album. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fair, fair. Uh, I I don't follow live music as much as I would like to. Uh, I used to have the problem about um, the cigarette smoke bothers me. Uh, yeah. And, and so uh, going to bars with all the heavy smoke would be right. a, a, a problem. Um, I also don't really like people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> There. So, so yeah. going to places where there's a lot of them, you know. Um, I get that. I understand. It's not for everybody. It's not no, for well, everybody. no. And uh, <laughs> it's it's funny because I I do I do love live music. I love listening to it. Uh, but it's uh, it's more of an atmosphere thing for me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the yeah the what I have to do in order to be able to listen to it, I'm not always willing to do. You know, gotcha. um, but I mean, having said that, I've I've gone to some live concerts and stuff. I won't embarrass myself by telling you right now what my first concert <laughs> was. Uh, also, you might not even know who the person is, so it'd be a, a waste. But uh, I, I I can tell you that for my senior skip day, back when I was a senior in high school, uh, I got to see Huey Lewis in the news. Ah. Oh. That's awesome. So that was that was a good one. That's cool. Uh, yeah, but um, yeah, uh, my friend uh, George uh, has done uh, the local band thing, and I have gone out and listened to, to him in the past. Um, I actually would love to go out and hear you because I've pretty well always thought you were a rock star. Um, so you know, it's just all like listen to that girl whale, you know. Uh, but, you remember when we recorded that CD? Yes. Do you yeah. still have that? Oh yeah, I have mine. I have mine. Uh, I it's have, been it's been it. a little while since I listened to it. <laughs> yeah, I still I still have that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, yeah, so uh, like like your first record. <laughs> it, honestly, it really was. Um, yeah. I mean, I have I haven't done much recording at all, but. Um, when I was in Joe, when Joe was directing Alice in Wonderland, the way that he directed it is he very much directed it like we were kind of in our own music video, you know, <laughs> like that's what it kind of the feel that I had just because of how righteous the music was. And uh, he had the idea of having all the cast members, we recorded a CD and it was the cast members singing it. And um, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Yeah, I just, uh, I, well, and of course, I have to give a lot of credit to uh, Karen Underwood for that because mm. she uh, she wrote the music for that, and yeah. uh, I 
I gave her a little bit of guidance, a little bit of guidance <laughs> on, on, on lyrics, but almost all of that was just Karen Underwood. That's uh, amazing. She's, yeah, she was phenomenal. Yeah. And that's, that's one thing about Wichita Falls that a lot of people don't really know, no, like the musical talent in this town, and especially that just even comes here for a few years, even if they didn't grow up here or whatever, but we get amazing talent in this town. Yeah. And um, I mean, some of the best shows I've ever seen have been right here in Wichita Falls. Yeah. And, um, and that's, I, that's, I think I get, I get a little frustrated when I see, well, there's nothing to do here and there's nothing to do. And I'm like, there's a lot to do. You just have to go seek it out, you know? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm going to fall in your lap. Yeah. <clears throat> and I, I, I do wonder about that sometimes when I do hear people talk about there not being anything to do in Wichita Falls, I, I often wonder what it is that they want to be doing. Right. We exactly. Yeah. Well, consists to say all anyone wants to do around here is eat. So. so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean. Uh, I mean. We, we we have a couple of places you could do that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> What 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 is the name of your band now? Oh yeah, I guess I should say that. Um, yeah. the Alanis Morissette tribute is called Jagged Little Band, and then um, the '90s cover band is called Escape Goats. Um, we got a a local artist slash musician. He drew up a logo for us, and we, we were telling him, you know, giving him ideas like skateboarding, jinkos, um, <laughs> goat. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, he came up with like a goat riding a skateboard wearing Jinko. So it's a pretty cool logo. We're pretty excited about it. Um, but we've got that. Um, we actually have a show. God, um, we have three shows coming up. We're paying the pub all three times. Um, the Iron Horse Pub is, there's a reason they're the biggest or the most popular live music place in town is because they are the only place in town that provides sound. Um, it's really hard as a band to either one, find a sound man to come and do your sound for you while you're up on stage, um, or doing the sound yourself. Um, you're literally having to rely on people in the audience to be like, Hey, uh, you might need to turn your guitar up because it's like, I can't hear the guitar. And so they're like, Oh, like you don't know. Cause you're up on stage, you know? Sure. So, um, but that, that's, I mean, obviously more, it's more than that, but personally as a musician um, of sorts, uh, that's why Iron Horse is my favorite place to play because you just show up, plug in and you're good to go. Um, so all of our, our shows are going to be at the Iron Horse Pub. Um, we've got one coming up pretty soon at the end of the month. Um, there at September 23rd, but yeah, I just, I like the, the music scene is very tight knit. Um, a lot of musicians, if you notice, if you start following around the bands that are playing a lot, they're all the same people. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's all the same people, different band names, different genres. Uh, musicians share um, with each other all the time. Um, and they do that in the, you know, the popular music scene sure. world, like they're called hired guns. You know, there's tons of guitarists and bassists that jump from band to band to band. And we actually do that here in mean, Wichita Falls, too. Um, I think a lot more than being a talented musician is being someone that is easy to work with and someone that people enjoy actually working with. And so that's why you'll notice a lot of these people are shared amongst bands is, is because of that, because they're easy to work with and they're flexible and things like that. So we've I got a really reliability is a major aspect. Oh, of yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And the actual drive to do it and, you know, saying that, um, you know, you'll be at practice at when you'll be at practice and actually being able to show up, you know, that's a big thing for sure. But, um, but yeah, it's a good scene and we're trying to keep it fresh. There's uh, obviously there's a lot of cover bands, um, original bands that feel a certain way about that. And that's fine. But um, with cover band and a lot of people, the draw to go see a live show is if you know the music, yeah, um, a yeah. lot of people don't want to spend the money and take the time out of their night to go sit and watch a band that they don't know any of the songs. And so they're just like, you know, they sound good, but what is it doing for me, you know? 
<laughs> you want to be able to sing along and know the song and it, you know, brings a memory back to you. Um, so that's why I personally love, you know, listening to cover bands and things like that because I can sing along and I know the songs. And in my opinion, uh, being in a cover band is kind of harder than in an original band because people know the song that you're doing. So if you mess up or if you sing it wrong or something like, that, like oh, they didn't do that right. So it's, it's a little bit more pressure to kind of be more perfect about it, you know, whereas an original band, you can, you wrote the song, so you do whatever the hell you want with it, so. Right. <laughs> well, you know, even, even Elvis Presley sang the wrong words to his songs. So I mean. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's all good. Exactly, yeah, yeah. But we, we've got a good mix of cover and uh, original bands in town, so. Well, that's good. It's a good scene, yeah. Yeah. Um, when you're, has has your band either of them do you, do you guys do things like uh, at the after hours art walk or anything like that or oh yeah um well it's it's again i mean we're a six piece band so sure. and we so there's a lot of us and there's a lot of equipment and um so the after hours art walk downtown development the committee of the after hours art walk mm -hmm. um every art walk they find they not every art walk but most art walks they try to find a band uh, like a big band that can play outside in a street somewhere so that was actually um the Alanis Morissette tribute we do that was our first show was an art walk I think it was I want to say it was July art walk mm -hmm. we played in front of 8th street coffee house they just blocked off their parking lot and we played right there um, that was a lot of fun. Um, and luckily we played with a band that had all their own sound equipment. So they ran sound for us and then we kind of helped run sound for them. So, you know, we kind of helped each other out in that aspect. Um, but yeah, it's hard to just like pick up and just, you know, show up somewhere and play because we're a lot of band. Uh, but yeah, we've done that. And then <clears throat> we've played a benefit. Um, and a lot of bands in town, if you have a benefit show or something like that, and you're looking, you know, thinking a lot of a live band might be good entertainment for that you just talk around like there's a lot of bands that will do it for free just because they want to play <laughs> they, they want people to listen to them they want to play and for them i mean more than anything, it's a good practice you know right. what i mean um and it's good even if you're not making money at least you have an audience to kind of give you a little bit of feedback um because you know in your head and in your jam pad you're probably with the best band in the world but <laughs> when you take it to the street people might disagree with you <laughs> and that's okay that's okay <laughs> but yeah we do that but we um <clears throat> like i said we're trying to book around it's hard it's hard to book outside of town yeah. um because i mean you you have to know people you really do and that's why i i I tried to pick brains of the bands that do get to go out of town, like Clint Vines and the Hard Times, they go out of town. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the metal scene bands, they go out of town, a lot of country artists and stuff like that. Um, but really it's just about networking more than it. They don't care what you sound like. I mean, they do, obviously they don't want you to be terrible, but right. um, <laughs> it's all about networking really. And uh, if you can get people in the bar, like if it's a band that doesn't really have a big following and you don't have a lot of people interested in what you're doing, then why does, you know, they don't want to book you. Like, what, <laughs> you know, they're like, why, why do we care if you're here if you're not bringing us business? So <laughs> right. um, do you, do you feel like that doing the music, doing, doing the, the bands, even just locally, is that something that you'd really like to be able to just continue doing for as long as you can? Or, or do you have a visualized, well, you know, I'm probably going to do this five, 10 years and then I'm going to be out. Right. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I don't, I definitely don't have a timeline on it. Um, I really enjoy doing it and I know it's never, I'm not going to be some famous person that gets to do this for the rest of my life. And I get to, you know, travel around and be a rock star. Like that's, crazy um not a lot of people get that opportunity so i just enjoy doing it as much as i can and if it ends in a few years then it does and i always got karaoke so right, sure. Sure. <laughs> karaoke is easy to come by but uh i'm i'm definitely just enjoying it while i can and as of now like i've got a great group of musicians um, that I play with and we all get along and we all hang out you know besides just the band stuff and you know we're all actual friends so it's working out splendidly right now but uh you know band drama as they call it can happen 
and uh, you should us. <laughs> so. um, in addition to uh, music, I, I know that you're in, involved in uh, or have been involved in local theater too. Mm -hmm. You've been working with uh, Backdoors Improv? Yeah, uh, amongst many others, yes. Um, in, improv, um, I'm on the board of directors and um, I'm on the fundraising committee. And then I also audition for shows. Um, and I also help like while the run of the show happens, like I'll help with front of house and, you know, things like that. If they need help with lights or whatever, whatever. I, I mean, anything they want me to do, I'll do. I wash dishes, um, <laughs> I'll do anything they want me to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that place. Yeah, it's a good place. Uh, that was the place. back door was the first community theater that I did. Uh, in Wichita Falls. Uh, the first thing I did there, I played, I was in the chorus playing a townsfolk person in Music Man uh, in 82. Oh, yeah. I was born in 82. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, there, it has such a rich history um not just the, the not just the building itself but the troop of players that have been known as the backdoor players um a lot of people don't know that they got their start at um oh what was the name you know the big mansion that's on kale like over by harrison that's been recently sold within but people lived in it and it was like a museum at one point do you know what i'm talking about uh i do but i can't think i can't of think of the name of it there's a name for it anyways but that big mansion back way back when, that's um, kind of where the troop started out um, and where the name back door came from. Because in that house at the bottom, there's a, like a basement kind of area. And that was like their parlor room and their hangout room where the piano was and they had drinks and things like that. And there was a back door um, from the house and that's where they entered. They entered in through the back door to go down to that parlor room. And that's where the back door players started. And then once they were able to uh, purchase that building, uh, downtown on Fifth Street. Um, that's when the theater, you know, came on up, got its up. Uh, I actually saw a show at the at the mansion the, originally at, at the mansion. Oh, that's the cool. First, first show of theirs that I saw, and it was uh, the Sunshine Boys. Oh, I think it was Gear Brundage and Bob King. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, and then. It was, it was a weird thing because uh, dad was military. So we had been in the Wichita Falls area in the 70s and then moved elsewhere and then came back uh, in the 80s. So when we came back, they were already back. They were in on uh, on Indiana in the in the ice house. Mm -hmm. But when we were here in the 70s, they were in the mansion. In the mansion. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a cool theater, man. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you're into theater. <laughs> yeah. If you like that kind of thing. Well. If you like that kind of thing. I mean, uh, we do straight plays too. Like it's not all musical and dancing and, you know, things like that. I've, I actually have friends that like, would even say like, I'm not really into musicals, but they'll come because like I'm in the show or a friend of theirs is in the show or something like that. So they're like begrudgingly will go and support their friend. And by the time they leave, they're like, okay, we really like that. I'm like, yeah, see, <laughs> it's not all, it's not all bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay, I've got a quick question. Yeah. We mentioned at the beginning, there's lots of people here in Wichita Falls that say there's nothing going on here. What would the <laughs> two of you, and I'm opening this to the both of you, suggest for like uh, people who've come to like the university and they've, they've never lived in Wichita before, uh, Falls before. What would you suggest to them to start getting interested in some of the local entertainment, I guess is how I describe it. Because it went musical, theater, um, museums, so forth is, what would you say is a good starting place on that sort of uh, road? Um, my suggestion is talk to locals. Um, like uh, there's close restaurants and bars close by to the college. Just go in and start talking to locals. Um, people love to talk about their favorite places to go to. Um, <laughs> so that's a good, a thing and then also facebook facebook is a great way 
to find, there's tons of groups on Facebook that share um, events that are happening all over Wichita Falls. And then once you find your favorite place or whatever, just look them up on Facebook, look through their page and see what events they've had in the past and what they've got going on in the future and, you know, see uh, if that's up their alley. But yeah, like you said, I mean, there's lots of live entertainment. There's lots of good restaurants, of course, museums. Um, there's events all the time, like painting parties and, you know, things like that. But yeah, uh, like I said, it doesn't fall in your lap. If you put the effort to go look for it, you can find it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that's true for sure. Um, I think that if you, if you're a student who lives on campus or lives really near campus, um, and then especially if you maybe don't have your own vehicle, right? Um, I think you should check out what the bus routes actually are and what their schedules are to see where they go and when they go there. Um, and then, uh, yeah, absolutely check online. For sure, you can check uh, Facebook. Uh, there's actually a Wichita Falls page. It's like discoverwichitafalls.com, uh -huh. um, uh -huh. and they have events listed that are happening all around the area. Um, or the uh, physical or digital copy of the Times Record News will have uh, things about local area events. Um, or what is it? The Texoma, Texoma homepage. Oh yeah. Be a place that you could look for 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 local events. And then it's and then that is that thing too about like it does depend a little bit on what you're interested in. Um, there are some things that maybe we don't have a good venue for. Like if your thing is NASCAR, right. I don't know that we necessarily have a good racetrack locally. Uh, there's but, that one up there on 369, but it's not like constant. Like they don't always have races going yeah. on. Yeah. But uh, we have we have a lot of, of things to do. And, and uh, we have the thing about uh, even if it's not a, a, a thing that's continuous in Wichita Falls, we do have things that come here, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, and, and that's a thing that people don't realize that happens is like uh, the comedian uh, Fluffy, is, is, it, is it Gabriel Iglesias? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Comes here fairly <laughs> regularly. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, there have been like when episodes. Steve of was shows. just here. I'm sorry, what? When Steve-O was just here, oh, that Steve -O was a here. big deal. Uh, yeah. There's the, the show uh, Dinner Impossible filmed an episode here. Um, of course, the Dallas Cowboys trained here for a couple of years. You know, there's there's stuff that happens here that you maybe don't think about that happens here, but it's it's around, it's available. Um, yeah. Good answer. So That's get out there, folks. <laughs> yeah, get out there. It's like this all you know, the thing was like from X Files, the, the the truth is out there. The fun <laughs> is out there. The you fun is to, out know, there. <laughs> you have to go find it. Yeah. That's Speaking true. of which, I got another question. It's a follow-up question based on what yeah. we just said. Um, have the crowds bounced back from COVID yet? I mean, have, are the people out there like they used to be? I would say yes. Okay. Um, there's definitely it's not as constant as it used to be. Um, you can definitely tell there's a draw to certain things more so than other things. But I mean, I it seems the same, to be honest, bef since before before COVID, is that what we're calling? BC? Yeah, I guess. That would be yeah. C stands for now. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> before COVID, yeah. It's, it feels pretty much the same to me. I mean, I don't know if y'all went out during the hotter in hell weekend, but uh, <laughs> there's a lot of people out. It was a little crazy. Uh, but even too, like the downtown festivals that have been happening, um, there's been a lot of people in attendance for it. And I think people, for the most part, just, I think people are treating it as just like a cold or a flu at this point. You know what I mean? If you get it, you get it. You stay home your days, you need to stay home and we'll see you in a week, you know? <laughs> right. Um, I, yeah, I wonder, I, I, I wonder about that too. Uh, it's like, I know that even just going to uh, local restaurants. There was a time period when 
there would be very few people inside. Of course, there was a time period when the inside of everything was just closed and you could only do like curbside pickup or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like places have picked up and they're pretty well back to normal. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of people are, I mean, a lot of places are still short staffed too. And I mean, that's kind of an, a, a testament to how busier people are getting because they're like, okay, it's good to have the business, but now we don't have the employees. So. Yeah. <laughs> Eek. But I definitely say, uh, especially the college students or anyone really visiting or anyone locally, um, just be patient. Like they, <laughs> if you go out, like expect to wait on your food, like you might have a wait and that's okay. They're doing their best. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, I had a, had a friend who's talking about um, his child. Uh, he had a, a young daughter. And he was talking about um, the need for public school. He's specifically at the time talking about like pre-K, but mm. he was like, you know, there's there's stuff that my daughter can learn at pre-K that we can't teach her, including how to wait in line. Right. And it was just like, she's right. the only kid in our house, but you know, <laughs> if she's in a room with twenty other kids, that thing about taking your taking turns and sharing things. Right. Like, we can't teach her that at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it definitely helps to uh have the social aspect yeah. you don't want to be the the awkward social person you know yeah. i mean maybe you do i don't know i don't um, know you line up the stuffed toys you say no it's mr teddy's turn now you, you will get to you when we get to you right <laughs> i mean i'm i'm just i'm the opposite but i'm a social butterfly and i like to go to all the events and by the end of the week i'm at exhausted because I've said yes to so many things I'm like, oh my gosh but I but I have a good time you know so sure. but I'm blessed uh I don't have any children so I don't need to worry about uh <laughs> you know lines and social awkwardness with them so yeah. <laughs> I get to go on my own accord it's good yeah <laughs> it's not for everyone it's not for everyone no it's not it's not but yeah um I was gonna say at the theater we've got auditions coming up soon um, and it's a really big production. It's a Christmas show. Uh, mm -hmm. It's called The Greatest Christmas Pageant or something like that. Do you know it, Joe? It's a pretty, I think it's called The Greatest Christmas Pageant or The Best Christmas Pageant. Yeah. Christmas Pageant. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's for all ages. Like, I mean, they're casting, um, there's 19 speaking roles. Uh -huh. And then on top of the ensemble and the background people. So there's going to be casting a lot of people for this play. And it's all ages, um, all talent levels. Um, it's a really cool thing, especially if your kid has been homeschooled a lot. Um, <laughs> it's a good thing to kind of get him out. And so, I mean, even if you're not doing school stuff, but at least you're getting them around other kids and talking and things like that. And uh, even doing like the the uh, crash works that maker space they've got a lot of great things for kids and it's a good way for them to get out and socialize and not just be stuck at home with their brother and sister and not know how to act around other people right. Right. <laughs> uh, to, to, to be fair i'm still working on that learning how to you know interact with other people yeah it's a it's a learning process for sure yeah just on ongoing yeah <laughs> yeah i might be too social sometimes yeah because i've got you know the board of the uh, doing the board at the theater and helping out at the theater and then um the two bands of course and then i've got karaoke that i do every week and i have a trivia show that i write every week and then i do more karaoke like for private parties and things like that and i don't know how i do it all but i do i'm tired i'm telling you that <laughs> <laughs> do do you have a like go-to karaoke song oh well i did yes um oh, my no. go my go-to warm-up song was always no rain by blind melon okay yeah because that was a song that kind of had a good range where i could get a you know a few different note pulls from there just to warm up the vocals um, that used to be my go-to, but when you do karaoke, um, as often as I do, you get real dang sick of doing the same songs over and over again. <laughs> so, uh, nowadays I just kind of pull a song and just go with it, whatever. 
Are y'all into karaoke? Ryan nope. looks like a karaoke singer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I like, like, much like Joe, I hate people and I don't <laughs> like going anywhere. So, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> well, it sounds. Uh, go ahead. No, I was just saying, it sounds like y'all are perfect for the library. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, Sadly, people have told, I've told a professor once, I may be the most outgoing librarian in the building. And his only <laughs> response was, oh, Ryan, that's horrible. <laughs> oh my God. I, I, I will say that I do, do enjoy uh, when in the comfort of my own living room, uh, like singing along with uh, musicals, uh, you know, uh, it's especially nice because we often have the uh, closed captioning on. So it's oh, almost right. like the old school, you know, sing along thing. It's like, oh, hey, look, I can see the lyrics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's, um, kids love karaoke, yeah. um, especially these days because, the, you know, they have ready access to all, you know, all the American idols and the got talents and the mm -hmm. this and that and all that. Um, we try to do, so I have a karaoke show at Undeclared Bar and Grill, which is right by the college. It's literally in walking distance from the college. Come on down. Um, they've got a great menu. I haven't, I haven't had anything bad on their menu, like ever. Their food is really good. Um, but they all, they have like indoor games. Like they've got um, the Jenga, or not Jenga, the uh cornhole. Oh. And um, they've got like the hook on the string thing, you know, where you try to get the hook on the or the the ring on the hook that's attached to a string i don't know someone oh. made it up one day and it's a big hit um <laughs> i'm terrible at it though i'm no good at it and they got a pool table and stuff like that but on tuesdays we do trivia and i write that show every week i don't like work for a corporation or anything like that like i created it i write it and then um, on Wednesdays, we do karaoke, but both of those things, we do them early. We start at like seven. Mm -hmm. So it's a good thing. Like, and it's all ages. Like you can bring your kids in and have dinner and you could do a couple Disney karaoke songs and then have them in bed by nine, you know? So yeah. we're, <laughs> that, that's kind of the angle I'm trying to do. Cause I'm old too. Like, I don't want to be out till <laughs> 11 <laughs> p.m. on a, on a Wednesday. <laughs> so I try to get out of there early, but Sometimes, you know, those those college kids will come in a little later and uh, I'll stick around for them. Yeah. But um, yeah, we're, uh, what was I going with this? I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> Just rambling at this point. <laughs> that's okay. And that's fine. That's yeah. fine. That's what podcasts are for, right? Have you heard exactly. our podcast? We don't do anything know, right? ramble for a while. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's pretty much the format, yeah. Yeah, that's, well, that's good. <laughs> what I do you want to talk about? I don't know. Let's talk about know, this right? for a while. Okay. I did a little podcast for a little bit. Um, I used the uh, the Anchor app. You heard mm -hmm. Anchor? Yeah. 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 So I started my own. I think I did, um, I think like seven episodes is all I ever did. But they were a lot of fun to do. I really, I just got together with my friends and we just, I just recorded our conversation, really. It's <laughs> <laughs> I, I I listened to the first two or three of those. I think. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. There there was one that you did where like you were like recording in the middle of a family reunion or something, and it was like and somebody kept coming to the door, and you're like, "Hey, I'm I'm trying to do something here." Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I kept all of it. I didn't edit yeah. any of it. <laughs> well, the first podcast we did, I actually had people coming up and ask like knocking on my door asking questions. <laughs> great <laughs> yeah. I think, you know it keeps it real keeps it real yeah. <laughs> and by the way folks if you see me glancing up it's because i'm right in front of the reference desk and i'm seeing if anyone needs help so oh. i know that once in a while you guys will see me do this <laughs> i'm not zoning out i'm trying to see if someone needs help outside the reference desk because if, if chris like is here <laughs> joe's here and i'm here there are no other librarians on this floor so yes i am <laughs> I am divided a lot of times when I'm oh doing Oh my this. gosh. So wait, I, I, this is going to sound crazy probably to you because you're in a library every day, but I have not been to a library in a very long time, believe it or not. Um, do, 
y'all don't use the Dewey Decimal System like at all anymore, right? We do. Um, a public library will. Oh, okay. We're not a public library. We're an academic library. So we tend to use something called the Library of Congress call number. Six. Ah, got you. So, but the public library still uses Dewey Decimal. Yes, if it, it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. Right. Plus, if you were to fix it, it would take, I don't know, years to actually <laughs> transfer to the new system, basically. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So mainly people just use computers there now, right? To just look up what they're looking um, for. For the most part, people come in here to study. It's a study space nowadays. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I imagine you, they can find most of what they want just on the internet, right? Well, again, when all of us were younger, it was the type of thing is, you know, if you wanted someplace to be alone to study, you go to a library. Um, yeah. They now come to the library because, um, well, actually, uh, because if they're at home, they won't do any work, get any work done because there's too many options for them to do at home. They'll get ah. on the internet, they'll get on the texting, they'll, they'll, they'll watch videos on their phone. And so they come here as a way to discipline themselves to actually get schoolwork done. That makes sense. That's like me in a gym. Like I ain't working out unless I'm in a gym. And they're like, well, you can walk, you know, around your neighborhood or you can lift weights at home. I'm like, well, who's doing that? Okay. <laughs> I, I did yard work yesterday. I have this to ask. Why is it that rich people pay lots of money to go to a gym, yet they refuse to clean their house or, or take care of their yard work? They actually, they'll go and pay somebody else to do those exercises for them. Mm. Um, because well, pushing a mower is no different than a treadmill. I mean, think about it. Right. But on a treadmill, you can be in an air conditioned building. Oh, okay. <laughs> and you can have your amenities very closely available to you. <laughs> actually, I've seen some of the newer, the newer, um, really expensive uh, lawnmowers. They actually have cup holders. And stuff like oh, perfect. <laughs> I know my dad has one with like an umbrella and a cup holder and... <laughs> going to plug a tv into it at some point i'm sure <laughs> i'm just thinking one of these days someone's going to come up with it with a really great idea to do an interactive like outdoor um exercise gym where the, the it'd be stair steppers while lifting this this thing and you play this game where you trim out bushes to make them in certain shapes okay or or, or, or if, if, if if you do if you do the, the treadmill you actually push a weight so you get you get the arm strength going and you, you make little patterns in, 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 a, in a set square area and stuff like that. And you'll know you're done because everything looks different. I'm just <laughs> saying it, it's, it's a great way to open stuff up for, for, for new types of exercises. These are great ideas. I'm writing this down. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of rowing machines, you sit them in the bathroom and have them do this. Have them, you know, scrub either side of, of, of the bathtub. I mean, yeah, it's just. Oh, my god! Someone's going to make a mint off of this. I'm just saying. <laughs> brilliant because not only do you exercise because that sense of accomplishment like you've done something you know yeah right absolutely eh. i have to mow my lawn and i'm just dreading it i don't mind it so much my thing is i have dogs and so before you mow the lawn you've got to pick up all the dog stuff oh yeah oh yeah <sighs> i hate it i hate it i would gladly pay someone to do that i would well, I've tried, but um, I haven't been happy with any of the lawn service people. So this weekend, I was like, let me pull out the mower and do it myself again. <laughs> I know a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk afterwards. Okay. <laughs> well, what it's 2.55. What um, else you got for me? Oh. <laughs> Okay, uh, should we should we move on to upcoming? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> wanted, okay, future upcoming stuff in the community. Uh, the empty bowls of Wichita Falls, which is an event to benefit the Wichita Falls Area Food Bank, that's going to be held October fourth uh, at the Wichita Falls Museum of Art at MSU. Uh, you can visit emptybowlswf.org or call 940-766-2322 for more information. Uh, the next After Hours Art Walk is October 6th. Uh, Backdoor Theater's production of Wait Until Dark runs October 7th through the 22nd. 
And you can get tickets or learn more at backdoortheater.org. Uh, Wichita Theater is producing Clue the Musical, October 7th through November 12th. And you can contact them via email at uh, info at wichitatheater.com or call their box office 940-723-9037. Uh, here on campus, the music series at Aiken Auditorium will present the Escher Quartet at 7.30 on October 11th. Uh, quartet's known for its wide stylistic interests. Uh, and you can visit msufineartstickets.universitytickets.com for more information about that. Uh, Falls Jam is happening at the IMPAC on October 22nd. You go to ticketmaster.com for, for more information on that. And uh, our next uh, podcast in October, we're going to be talking about Halloween and horror books and movies and stuff. Yes. It's something we've done every year. We've been doing this. This will be our third year now doing this. And every October, we always talk about Halloween. I like it. I think I'm going to do um, in October. Uh, my trivia is going to be like themed, like Halloween themed every week. That'd be cool. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And we've got, um, we have an improv show coming up September 16th at Backdoor Theater. Um, I think it might be close to being sold out though. So I'm not sure on that one. You'd have to check the website. And then um, at Undeclared Bar and Grill, on September 20th, which is a Tuesday, we are doing a Stranger Things trivia night. Oh. Um, all the gifts are Stranger Things merchandise and you know fun things like that. And we're gonna decorate the whole bar like you're on the um, upside down. Uh, cool. We're have, oh yeah, we're going all out. So in, invite everyone, tell everyone to come. It'll be a good time. It'll be all a good right. time. Yeah. And then, oh yeah, my band's playing. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> September twenty well. third, September twenty third uh, at the Iron Horse Pub. There's actually three bands playing that night, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. And then uh, the Alanis Morissette tribute band will be playing October eighth at the pub. So, lots right. of options, lots of good things going on. All right. Well, ho hopefully, some of our audience will show up at those. That'd be good. Yeah. And if you do show up, come up and uh, talk to me, introduce yourself, and I'll I'll show you all the good Facebook pages to follow where you can find all the events. <laughs> where uh, I'm really good at stalking people on uh, Facebook, so I'll I'll show you who to stalk and who to follow. <laughs> That's an important skill now. It, it is. It really is. It's very helpful. Oh, uh, what about? Uh, our pop culture stuff, Ryan, or, or do you have books or shows or anything that you're looking for? Again, I've got homework. I need to read more of that, um, of the new weird uh, uh, book that I promised I'd read. And I, I've actually got three more books I need to order and start reading those as well as alternatives to the one that we picked out because it's not in print. So uh, that's, that's something I need to do. How about yourself? Uh, well, before before our next podcast, hopefully I will actually have read that book that Shannon told us about. Um, and then other than that, uh, I don't I don't know about like, uh, I mean, because I don't do the like the video game thing. So if it's, you know, it's pretty well got to be book TV movie or I'm not going to know what it is. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything that's really coming out. I mean, most of the stuff that came out came out this month because September, beginning of the, the fall um, television series or streaming series. So, yeah. Yeah, I got nothing on that. <laughs> if it ain't local, I don't know about it. So, yeah. I, well, I don't know. I'm going to a Misfits concert in October. That should be fun. Cool. <laughs> cool. Um, I was, I was trying to remember what the last concert I went to was. I think the last one I went to, and again, this is people that came through Wichita Falls uh, when uh, Three Dog Night came and did a show at Wichita Theater. I think that's the last one I was at. Sammy, the last concert I was at was probably either Rush or Jethro Tull in the early 90s. Oh. I mean, good bands, but yeah, yeah good bands. 
yeah, you, you, I mean, no, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a, I'm a progressive rock person. So, uh, the con the places I went to was like the first concert I saw was yes. Um, I saw a second concert by yes. I've seen two concerts by Jethro Tall. I've seen Rush. I've seen Pink Floyd. Um, in fact, I was going to mention, you were talking about the smoke. Yeah. Smoke yeah. really bothered me at the Pink Floyd, um, concert as well. Not for the same reasons you sure. pointed out, but for completely different reasons. Right, well. yeah. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you don't have to worry about that now. There's no smoking inside now, so it's much better. <laughs> it's yeah, much better. I, I, that that is a reason that I, I feel like I, I would be more inclined to to go out now. Yeah. And, and um, I really, really need to come out specifically and see you, honestly. But uh, it's like, yeah, that you 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 may get me to to go to a bar to listen to music. Oh like my specifically. god! Specifically, <laughs> that would be an honor. The best, th <laughs> the best way to do it, Joe, is just get like a table. You know, yeah. get a table yeah. that way you can just sit and you have your own space, and then a waitress will come to you, and you don't have to worry about the people. <laughs> yeah, just like just like have to show up like half an hour early or something to grab your spot, right? <laughs> Well, at the Iron Horse Pub, they do take reservations. So, yeah, like Ooh. I'm saying, if you want to, if you want to make it a library night or something like that, too, Joe, think about it. That could be fun. We yeah. should do that. Yeah, we Think should do about that. It. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me on, guys. Thanks yeah, no for problem. being here. <laughs> uh, next week, Chris should be back. Um, the main reason he's not here tonight is because he is scheduled to do a tour right now. So that's the reason he's not on. That and the fact his 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 eight month year old daughter, I think, is trying to kill him by not oh. sleeping but you know yeah. that, that's the thing that babies do yeah that's what i hear that's why i didn't have any <laughs> <laughs> uh but thanks everyone for joining in we will be back next month uh to talk about all things spooky is there anything anyone want to finish up saying before we go out uh texoma gives is this weekend i don't know is that a college thing does college help with that do y'all do stuff for Texoma Gives? I don't know if the campus does, but I mean, I'm, I, I know that individual staff and faculty and will, will participate for sure. Yeah, it's a, it, I mean, it's a big popularity contest, but um, it's still fun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's still a good way to, for nonprofits to help try to raise money. We're doing a big, um, our, our idea this year for the Backdoor Theater is we're doing a charity uh, cause we're, we're trying to buy new chairs, oh. um, for the, <laughs> for the dinner stage. Cause you know, we've been rebuilding the dinner stage. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we need new chairs. So, uh, we're doing a charity and, uh, all the board members, um, we had a lot of fun taking silly photos and stuff of us, like sitting on things that aren't chairs and, uh, saying, you know, please help us, uh, cherish the backdoor theater. So uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's good stuff. That's very punny. Oh yeah. Good. We're full of it. <laughs> Uh, well i guess that's it i want to thank everyone for tuning out and we will be back uh next time all right Bye.